I'll now turn it over to Senator Braun for your opening remarks. Thank you, Madam Chair. Before coming to the Senate, uh, I spent 37 years in my hometown building a business that started as a real little one that evolved into a national company. When you do that and you live on Main Street, uh, your employees are your friends and your family. And I think it's so easy that companies that do grow, especially when they don't get too corporate, when they get detached from maybe what got them there in the first place, it's a different dynamic. And we had that conversation a little bit you know, prior to uh, this hearing today. I know firsthand that the burden that the federal government can put on a small business in just making payroll can be significant. And the other thing you got to realize is that small businesses, they are earning a living mostly in that small business as a paycheck, and they're providing jobs to boot. So it's technically a much tougher uh, kind of dynamic than it would be in just working somewhere. And I want to make sure whatever we do is that we don't throw cold water on that or make it to where we discourage entrepreneurialism and what happens on Main Street. Big difference between Main Street and corporate America, in my opinion. Um, when it comes to how government interacts, uh, I think there's a place for having common sense regulations where uh, employees, when they are not treated in a way where it's like family, friends, where you're not giving good wages, benefits, and a good long-term future there, or especially, we were in a hearing earlier this year on the Budget Committee, uh, and it related to the um, issue of uh, unionizing Amazon. Of course, you have, in that case, uh, higher than normal accident rates, higher turnover rates, and, you know, when you're maybe um, bragging about the fact you're paying a $15 an hour wage, I think we need to aim higher than all of that. And I think there's a place for that uh, interjection of government. But when it comes to what drives this country, what makes it what it is, it's Main Street America, it's that small grassroots economy, uh, and most of the people there remember are making their living out of that entity. So we don't want to do anything that suppresses it. Today we're considering the nominations of uh, Carla Gilbride for General Counsel of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and Jessica Lumen for the Administrator of the Wage and Hour Division uh, of the Department of Labor. We had a, you know, I think, lengthy conversation in how recently where that attempt was to move uh, that salaried position from a figure of like 27,000 ended up at 36, but then got proposed being as high as in the 70s or 80s. That would completely disrupt and uh, ruin the dynamic that many small businesses have to live with, acknowledging too that if you're on a salaried uh, pay system, that there are certain things that maybe are different from it versus being a waged employee. I want to make sure that during the Trump administration, we tried to take a little bit of the burden off of Main Street, that we don't add back to it, conflating the need that might come from that dynamic of huge companies with their employees versus small business in Main Street with theirs. Commission could reverse, um, you know, the approve, reverse some of this stuff, and then you involve litigation. Then you make it strenuous. A lot of that marginal difference and having to fight things that you're not necessarily needing to fight because you're doing a good job anyway can be the difference between staying in business and going out of business. The chair of the commission also has made clear that she will seek to reinstate burdensome collection pay data from employers in an attempt to identify pay discrimination. However, the reality is that this data provides no context for the wages such as job experience, education, or skill level. This collection will force employers to shoulder additional costs and require significant changes in their HR systems and again will have a disproportionately burdensome effect on smaller companies. 
As wage and hour administrator, Ms. Lumen would be charged with the enforcing of the Fair Labor Standards Act, which is the federal statute, statute dictating minimum wage, overtime pay, record keeping, and child labor requirements for private employers. As acting administrator, she oversaw the end of some of the things that Trump administration did, and we talked about that before this hearing as well, that we shouldn't just get rid of carte blanche if there's some common sense to it. The Biden administration is working on their own version of these rules, which I'm concerned will be somewhat job killing, burdensome, and bring uncertainty to employers, employees, and entrepreneurs. Based on the previous conduct, I'm concerned that the White House will attempt to circumvent Congress to implement aspects of the PRO Act. Uh, and if you tried to do this wholesale, I think, again, you're tampering with the grassroots dynamic of what makes this economy tick. There are solutions Congress can implement to help the government work with employers to create a better and fairer workplace, bona fide uh, goals to aspire to. For example, the Ensuring Workers Get Paid Act, which codifies the payroll audit independent determination pilot program is one of them. This program gave employers a way to proactively fix inadvertent overtime and minimum wage violations without the heavy hand of audits uh, and litigation and so forth. We need to keep that in mind because I think most small employers really like that before you get into a full-fledged regulatory discussion. President Biden ended the program upon taking office and this bill would reinstate it so we can work together with employers rather than continue the top-down, one-size-fits-all approach that it looks like we're now entering into. Thank you, Madam Chair.